Good morning. Excuse my mask. Oh. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to worship. I don't know what the weather is looking like outside. Maybe we've got a little, little snowflakes, but it is wonderful to have you here. I'm just having a little bit of a cold or something, so I'm keeping my mask on, but, um, and maybe my mind isn't fully with us since I'm clearly already ahead of things. Um, but uh, I'm happy that you are here today. This is the Sunday when we live into the Christmas story. We do our own little pageant. Um, I don't even know if we'll have one child here today. We don't. They, yeah. Oh, we. I think we've already. Luke and I already had this debate whether or not being being at his age is like good to be called a child or an adult. Don't rush him. So you can decide, Luke. <laughs> Um, but, but we'll be very pleased to have our pageant um, nonetheless as we live into the story of Jesus in this season um, and the birth of Christ. Uh, a few announcements. I know Brunch Bunch is heading off after the service, um, but if you would like to just pause, uh, we've set up uh, coffee and some uh, cupcakes to celebrate the birth of Jesus a little early um, in the gathering space. So please feel, uh, please join us there afterwards, if right outside in this room here. Join us for some coffee hour. Um, we are not having Bible study today because of Brunch Bunch, but we will um, have Bible study next Sunday and the first two Sundays of January. Next Sunday, um, if you would be willing to bring some cookies maybe your favorite Christmas recipe. You can even write it out if you would like to share it um, with others. Or if it's a secret, keep it to yourself and just bring the cookies to tantalize us. Um, but if you would bring some cookies and maybe a dozen or two so we can share, the idea would be that everybody gets to try some different Christmas cookie recipes, sort of exchange. Um, and if you would be willing to bring some boxed cookies, um, the idea is that we might wrap them up a little bit in some white tissue paper and put them in our blessing box as a gift for our neighbors um, over this next week, the week between the 18th and the 25th. So that's next Sunday. Um, I'm going to invite Art Charlton. Um, this is a, a much-awaited uh, announcement we always enjoy when art gives us the Christmas joy offering announcement so yeah, no 
Judge. <laughs> yes, the, the folks, good morning, everybody. Those hardworking, uh, very busy folks from uh, the mission team asked me once again to highlight for you the uh, Christmas Joy offering. And you can read all about it. These brochures are on the table here and on the table in the back. In brief, the Christmas Joy offering, and many of you probably already know this, but it provides assistance for both current and retired church workers and their families in their time of need. And also it develops future leaders, uh, particularly at Presbyterian related schools and colleges equipping communities of color. So uh, half goes to one side, the past, and, and half goes to the, the present and future leaders. So in order to uh, emphasize and keep this in your mind for the next week, because you can contribute today or, or next week, is when the Christmas Joy offering is officially accepted. <clears throat> we have a little song, so apologies for my voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, the weather outside is snowing, but inside our church is glowing. It inspires me to sing Christmas joy, Christmas joy offering. It helps new church leaders develop. So with love and support, we envelop. We want to give their schools everything. Christmas joy, Christmas joy offering. And remember all those retired, all the years that they've inspired. If they ever find they're in need, they can have some support indeed. So in this season of new hope, you can use your purple envelope. And today or next week, you can bring a Christmas joy, Christmas joy offering. Thank you, please give generously. Next, I would like to highlight just a brief message um, that we received from the Lehigh Valley Hospice in, regarded, in regard to our hand-knitted and crocheted lap blankets. Now, I had one here because the other day I did a Zoom and it was chilly in here, so we had these lovely lap blankets that I could use. But we bring these um, thanks to the mission team and many of your joyful hands. Um, we bring them to these, these blankets, lap blankets, to um, patients at, to uh, the Lehigh Valley Hospice, and we have a nice thank you note from them. So for anyone who has ever donated to our, our knitting ministry, uh, thank you. They are much appreciated. Also appreciated um, are all the gifts that you continue to put in the blessing box if you are able to sign up for the blessing box, please do so. Um, a note of thanks for uh, our choirs. Uh, there's no rehearsal on December 28th. And for the handbells, no rehearsals on December 21st or the 28th. So please note that. Um, we are going to be endeavoring to close the uh, parking lot door um, uh, once services start, so um, just make a note that if you come and want to use the parking lot door and it's 1030, you'll have to scooch around to the front of the church and come in our spring garden door. So just, just a warning for anyone who, um, who comes as the service is beginning. Just an, a, an attempt at safety procedures. Friends, we have a property team meeting this week on Tuesday. I've mentioned the cookie exchange. Our session is meeting on the 20th. And then please note, <laughs> this year our Christmas Eve service is on Saturday night, still at 7 p.m. And we will be having Christmas morning services. Um, come as you would like, dressed up or casual. Um, it will be a service with a lot of singing, and I look forward to celebrating that joyous day with you. Are there any other announcements that I have neglected? Hearing none, then let us worship God together. 
Will you please join me in this morning's call to worship? Alleluia, the Christ child comes. We wait to meet the babe in me. Let us throw off our distractions and allow the chaos to settle. We watch for signs and listen to the messengers. Let us be awed in anticipation for Christ Emmanuel comes. Alleluia, the Christ child comes. Come stand with me. Each week of Advent, we light this Advent wreath. With its light, we watch as the light of God glows ever brighter. As these lights grow brighter, we wait in growing expectation to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us joy of the world. Today, the flames of these candles, we are lighting three, two purple and the pink candle of joy. These candles remind us of the joy that Jesus brings into this world and his presence with us. Jesus said, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete.
Thank you, Jenny. Let us pray. We thank you, Jesus, that you want to bring joy into every life. We bring to you prayers for people and places in our hearts this morning, which bring us joy. We trust in your powerful name, and we pray for all who, who need your spark of joy to grow in their lives. Amen. Friends, this is the time in our service where we lift up prayers to God. And this, these prayers are particularly prayers that we request for forgiveness. They are our sorry prayers. If you would take a moment to think about the week behind you, anything that might be laying on your heart, something that you wish you had phrase differently as you spoke to someone, something that you left undone that you wish you had done, send a card telling somebody you're thinking of them, anything on your heart, and it doesn't have to be from just this past week, but anything that you would like to lift up to God to ask for forgiveness. Take a moment now to lift up that prayer to God. Amen. Let us sing. Friends, God forgives us. This is good news. Amen. Our first reading is from Luke 1, 46 to 55. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. He has looked on with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. The next reading is from Matthew 1, 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through prophet. 
The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. We are going to begin our pageant. But in order to begin our pageant, I need our players. So, in these front rows are, I think donkeys might be taken, but there's a donkey, a cow, a sheep. Let's see, there's Mary. There's three wise ones. There's an innkeeper. Is Star taken? Star is taken. There's some shepherds, there's Joseph, there's Gabriel, and some angel wings. So you can come forward if you would be willing to, you can get whatever you want, <laughs> Caitlin. Who would you like to be? Um, an angel. Okay. I'm going to have you be the head angel, Gabriel. Okay. You don't need my help. You can come forward if you would be willing to just... See if you can, they're very simplistic costumes, so it might be throw something over your shoulders, or you don't need the signs. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna... Everybody will know I'm the Okay, but then you may sit down with your costume. Now, where's my script? There wasn't a script on here, was there? That was, that was mine. That was mine. OK. Jenny, can I ask you? It, there's, I'm looking for a script. Could you stand up for one second? Let me just look. Nope. Nope. Um. My script. I'm just looking for our missing script. There was one over here. Go right to the source. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> we 
we begin the story of Christ's birth. In, oh, I need, um, I need the angel Gabriel and Mary to come forward. And stand up front. You can stay down here because you haven't made it to the manger yet. And when the time comes, you're going to hold this up for everyone to see. And you're going to hold this up for everyone to see. You can flip it around for now. Okay. <clears throat> An angel, Gabriel, was sent by God to the town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Will you turn it around? Hark, said the angel. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. And Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And she said, yes, yes. Okay. You need to just step off for a second. Now I need Mary, just, I, need, I need Angel, you're going to make another appearance. Now I need Joseph. Joseph. Hi. We've just learned about Joseph. The angel Gabriel, come forward again, oh, appeared to Joseph in a dream and said to him, Hark, listen, for good news is coming to you. You will give birth to a child and you will call him Jesus. And he will be the son of the Most High. And Joseph, trusting in God, said, yes, yes. Okay. Now you may sit down again. Now I need Mary. Now I need Joseph and Mary. What happened next, friends? They had to travel. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. So they had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. <laughs> About 30 minutes? Oh, OK. And they came to the town of Bethlehem. And do I have an innkeeper? I do have an innkeeper. <laughs> and because, because people have been traveled from everywhere, when it's right, you turn this around. OK. They traveled around, and they went from door to door knocking. And there was, there we go, we have good actors. And then this will be your second one. You have two lines. And then they finally came to the door of a good innkeeper who, note, who took note that Mary was very, very pregnant, but there was no room in the inn. <laughs> but the innkeeper thought and thought and wanting to help this young couple with their new baby, made them an offer. Would you be willing? And can you point to the stable? Do you see where it is? OK. And now 
In the stable, there, were, there was a donkey. Yes. I'm the sheep. Oh, you're the sheep? Okay, you can give that to the donkey. Yeah, even though, sorry. You, you're good. And they, and they made themselves at home in the manger. You, you, you all can make your barn... Barn sounds. Go ahead. The, the crowd is demanding you say them. <laughs> While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger. Now, out in the fields, there were shepherds. Do we have some shepherds? And do we have any other angels? Okay. When the time comes, you can come too. Yeah, you can come. You can be an angel too. You, and when the time comes, you can flip those around. All right, you guys are my shepherds when the time comes. You flip that around. Anybody else? That's okay. Uh, the shepherds were living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them. That's you guys. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for we are bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in the manger. And yes, suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host saying glory to God. When the angels had left them, the shepherds said to one another, let's go. Let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And now we're blending the stories a little bit. Where are my wise ones? Oh, yes, I need my star, too. All right. Now, star, your job is just to shine brightly. You can, the, we, you can turn this around when the time is right. You can turn around when the time is right. Don't need that anymore. You don't know who you are. Why do we think there were three... Wise men. There were only three gifts, but there could have been many. It's true. Oh, you'll have to share this. I made more than three for that. You're good. Okay, first we need the star. Where's our star? Oh, our star shining brightly. <clears throat> Can you, can you shine behind them? There we go. Perfect. Shine behind them. In the time of the King Herod, now this, where the, the king asked, um, wait a minute, I'm not jumping ahead. Now the birth of, the Jesus, of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. Mary had, had Jesus and was in the manger. And... I'm looking, I'm looking. The wa a star appeared in the sky. An important scar star and the wise ones come forward, face your, your congregation. The wise ones look and looked and to see the star. 
There it is. And they said, let us follow the star. Let's go. Let's follow the star and find where it leads us. And it led them to Bethlehem. And they recognized Jesus. And they knit. Well, they knelt down or they bowed down, whichever one your knees allow you to do. And they brought him frankincense, myrrh, and gold to pay, to pay him homage. Angels, do you want to join our tableau? And this is the story of how Jesus was born. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you. Friends, with continued joy, let us respond to the goodness of God with our tithes and offerings. You can leave your offering in the box in the front of the sanctuary or make your gifts online or via the mail. Or if you'd like to leave them in the manger, we can probably handle that as well. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we offer our gifts with humble hearts knowing the need in our world is great and our gifts alone will not be enough, that we offer our gifts in hope that you will bless them, multiply them, and use them to help fulfill your purpose revealed in Jesus Christ, Savior of us all. Amen. like to ask you to help lead us in our prayers of the people today. I take these titles, thanks, wow, help, and earlier we did sorry, from one of my favorite theologians, Annie Lamott, who says all our prayers can really be encompassed in these words. So this morning, I wonder if you'll take a moment to think of something you are grateful for. What are you thankful for this morning? And then if you are willing, if you'll raise your hand and shout it out, anything that you are grateful for,
thankful for this morning? Our church family, our church family. Thanks be to God. Yes. Jerry and Allison. Jerry and Allison. Thanks be to God. Jim. Yesterday, I finally got to visit with my great grandson. <gasps> Jim's great grandson. What's his name, Jim? Bryson. Bryson. Thanks be to God for Bryson and your first meeting. Amen. Caitlin. Family. Did you say more? Family is plenty. And your life. Oh, family and her life. Thank you, Caitlin. Yes. The beautiful flowers on our altar today, on our table today. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. The municipal band concert here last night. Yes, we were full. To, we were very full, um, very joyful music. Um, thanks be to God. How about any wows? Wow is a is is the prayer of of looking at this world with awe and wonder and mystery. It's not. It's just taking a moment to say. Oh my goodness, thank you God, but, but just standing in awe and wonder. I know not everybody's excited about the snow, but Caitlin and I are, are, are wowed. Yes, Phyllis. Oh, no, go ahead. Well, thanks be to God for getting into Lehigh, that's wonderful, Sophia. Congratulations. So the, for the volcano and all that it represents to her people, and um, the land and the land is growing, yes, and making her mark for sure. And also, thanks be to God that people are safe. So all all of that together. But yes. And I oh yes, all right. Downtown, center square, all lit up and beautiful. How about any prayers of intercession? Prayers asking for God's help for you or for someone. And I actually already have two. Um, at the concert last night, a grandmother approached me when she found out that I was the pastor here and asked if I would pray for her granddaughter, Gabby, who was also awaiting news about colleges. So she asked if we would pray for Gabby um, in her college search. So let's remember Gabby. And then one of our members was volunteering at an event with foster children and foster families. And because they play a special role in that evening, um, a little girl shared with him that she is praying for a Christmas miracle. Um, and we ask that you pray for this little girl she is praying that she gets to see her, her brother this season. So we don't know her name, but we pray for that, for that Christmas miracle to happen for that little girl in foster care. Any other prayers of inner? Prayers for Ethan. Glad he's home and prayers for his continued recovery and that his pain is a, it's never good for to be in pain. Jim. Oh. 
Happy birthday, Elizabeth. Prayers for Elizabeth's friends, Lori. This is the seventh anniversary of the loss of her, of her child, of her son. Prayers for her. And prayers for all families who have lost at this time of year. Yes, and if I, I'm sorry if I miss you. Keep, keep hands up. Yes, Linda. Prayers for Judy and the overwhelming health concerns that, that she faces. Prayers for our daughter's mother-in-law who had kidney stone surgery. For your Betsy, prayers for her recovery from kidney stone surgery. Yes, Lois. Prayers for our totally messed up government. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on all, all of our, our struggles in this world. Yep, messed up. Yes. Yes. Prayers for the, for the Iranian people, for their freedom, for their well-being, for their safety, and for reforms. Prayers for all who will be traveling um, in the coming times. Prayers for healing of members of our congregation. Uh, the Fougeres haven't been with us for a couple of weeks now, so prayers for Barry's health and their wellness. Any other prayers? Let us bow our heads. O oh, good and gracious God, you know the prayers on our hearts, and you know that the prayers of joy intermingle with sadness, intermingle with our cries for your help. Our wonder at this world can take our breath away, and it can also have us pause as we see just how often we make mistakes and we do wrongs. And so we see the beauty of this world, and we also see its ugliness. And that is all what we bring to you, God. We bring our stresses, and we bring those things that just make us joyful. And Lord, we trust that you know them all. You know the words before they escape our lips, and even when we can't form words, you know the prayers of our hearts. And so we ask you, Holy One, to gather all the prayers that we've said this day, gather them into your arms and close to your heart, we know, Lord, that you care, that you are not just a mighty God far away, but you are indeed Emmanuel, God with us. That you came and you lived as a tiny baby, so vulnerable in this world. And you walked in the shoes of a human being, and you know our struggles. And for that we give you thanks, that you would love us so much, that you would indeed be God with us and continue to be God with us. So hear our prayers. Breathe into us new life, that we might face the week ahead with new energy and, yes, with joy. And help us now as we remember the prayer that Jesus prayed, and help us to pray his words with sincerity. Together, let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our deacons will be taking poinsettias to their special care friends. There are the handmade cards um, along with the poinsettias in the Milheim room. And if you would like to have a moment before you head off into the snow or brunch bunch, please join us for coffee and cupcakes and some fellowship in our fellowship gathering space as well. And with that, brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, I send you in joy, for you are the hands and feet of Christ our King, of Emmanuel, of God with us. So bring the good news of the Christ child with you in joy out into the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, know that you are loved and blessed. Thanks be to God.